Happy Resurrection Sunday once again. And today we want to talk about the Word of God to strengthen our hearts. We are still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. There's so much danger in our surroundings. There are many negative views, both here and abroad. And we can be afraid. We can feel the stress of it all. And yet today on Resurrection Sunday, we declare the victory of Christ. And the Bible says, if you're a child of God, if you're a follower of Jesus, the victory of Christ is your victory. You are safe and no COVID-19 pandemic can harm you. Jesus Christ died and rose again for your complete salvation. And we experience that. And today we rejoice in that. Today I want to share a message entitled, Protected by the Blood and Empowered by the Resurrection of Jesus Christ. Protected by the blood and empowered by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And today we celebrate what God has done for us. We celebrate our salvation in Jesus and we celebrate our victory in the Lord. So I would go into a little bit of a teaching and then the application will come in uh, slowly into it. And then on the later half of this message, we will have more and more of the practical application. But all of this is good. And I promise you by the word of God, because the word of God is practical. It will encourage you. It will strengthen your heart. So let's begin with the first point. Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. And rose again from the dead so we can be saved from spiritual and other dangers. Jesus Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary. And he did not remain dead. He rose again on the third day after he was buried. And the Bible says all of that accomplishes for you and me salvation from spiritual and other dangers. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, the last part, the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus Christ gave himself for you. He died for you so that you can live. John 19 verse 30 says, When he had received a drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And so Jesus died so that you can live. And he declared a declaration of triumph when he said, it is finished. When he said it is finished, that means he has accomplished his purpose. He has purchased salvation for you and me. He gives you and me freedom and victory from curses, including the COVID-19 plague. He gives you the victory. You don't have to be afraid. Today you may be afraid. Today you may be stressed out. But the Lord is saying to you, I am with you. I am for you. And I give you victory. Ang kadaugan ni Jesus, imong kadaugan, ang iyong pagkabanhaw, nagahatag sa imuha, sa iyahang kadaugan. And then the next point, the shedding of Jesus' blood on the cross of Calvary and His resurrection from the dead destroys all powers against us. Jesus died on the cross in Calvary, in Israel, about 2,000 years ago, and He was buried, and on the third day He rose from the dead, and the Bible says when that happened, he destroyed through that the powers that are against you. For example, Ephesians chapter 1 says, Through his blood, we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Because you are a sinner, I am a sinner, we need forgiveness from God. And the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And so God sent the Lamb of God, Jesus and he died for your sins and my sins. And we can be forgiven now. The Holy God can forgive us. Because Jesus has died for us. And he accomplished salvation for us. Hebrews 2.14 talks about Christ's victory over the devil. The power of Satan over your life. He talks about by his death. He broke the power of Satan. Who holds the power of death over your life. Do you know that Satan has no power over you anymore? Because you're a child of God, Satan doesn't have a hold on your life. You are free from his grip and power. Colossians 2.15 talks about Christ's victory against demonic powers. It talks about powers and authorities, demons, and how he triumphed over them by the cross. 
Do you know that because Jesus died and rose again, and today again is Resurrection Sunday, the ultimate declaration of victory, you and I are powerful and victorious over demons. No evil spirit can harm you. You are safe because of Jesus. And then Colossians 2.15 says that Jesus disarmed the powers and authorities. And then Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, But he was pierced for our transgressions, that's Jesus. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him the punishment that brought us peace was laid. And with his wounds we are healed. Do you know that your sicknesses are healed because Jesus has died for you? He took upon his body all sins and with them all sicknesses. And because of that, you and I, if we're believers and followers of Jesus, we are healed. Matthew 8, 17 says, This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. And so Jesus took our illnesses and he bore our diseases. Today, we have COVID-19 pandemic. It is a very serious uh, uh, virus. It is very infectious. And in a good number of cases, it can kill. And so we can uh, be afraid. We can get really worried. But the word of God said that Jesus already took our sicknesses. And because of that, we are victorious. He took them upon himself. They were buried with him. And when Jesus rose victorious, he rose victorious not only over sin, the devil and demons, but also over sickness, also over COVID-19. Thank you, Lord. And then Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who was killed and rose again from the grave for the complete salvation of those who trust and obey God. You know that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. John 1, 29 is described as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Revelation 38 talks about the Lamb who was slain. And then Hebrews 10, 12 to 14 talks about Jesus being our high priest who did one sacrifice. He died for our sins and now he sits at the right hand of God and he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. That's you and me who believe in Jesus. Do you know that Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave gives you and me complete victory. There is nothing that is not included. If you're trusting in Jesus today, if you're a follower of Jesus, the Bible tells you, the Lord assures you that you have complete victory over sin, sickness, and the powers of the devil, and even death itself. Thank you, Lord. And then the Lord protects His people from plagues through the blood of the Lamb. A powerful analogy from the Passover story in the Scriptures. About 3,000 years ago, there was a plague that hit the land of Egypt. And the tenth of these plagues uh, was to kill the eldest, the firstborn of all humans and animals. Every household was under the severe threat of this plague. And then the Lord made a provision and those who believed in Him and obeyed Him, who did what He said, were spared. And that's what we want today. We want to receive the truth of deliverance or protection. And we want to receive from God our victory, our protection. It is a story of supernatural protection from God. Exodus 12, 12 to 13 talks about that on that night, God will pass through Egypt. And the first one of all people and animals will be struck down. And then verse 13 says, the blood, and referring to the blood of the Lamb that the Lord instructed them to kill, will be a sign uh, for them. And when God sees the blood, He will pass over them. No judgment can hit them. No destructive plague will touch you and destroy Egypt, God says. And so today the Lord is saying for you and me that there is a Lamb. And in the New Testament we know that's Jesus and he was a sacrifice. He died for you. He was killed for you. And if his blood is upon you, he will be spared from the judgment, from the plague that's coming. Exodus 12, 6 and 7 talks about how the lamb was to be slaughtered. And they had to take of the, of the blood of the lamb and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses 
where they eat the lambs. And Exodus 11, 6 and 7 talks about the loud wailing, so much grief and sorrow and pain. And then uh, it says, however, at the end of verse 7, that the Lord will make a distinction between Egypt and Israel. And I want you to understand this. It's not that God shows favor, it's that God loves all people. But those who love Him and obey Him will experience something that those who reject Him and distrust Him will not experience. And the people of Egypt are symbolic of the people who don't trust and obey God. The people of Israel are symbolic of the people who trust and obey God. And so there is a difference in terms of their experience. Those who believe and obey and were spared, the angel of death passed over them. But those who did not believe and obey suffered and they experienced death in their household. The blood of the Lamb as man's substitute must be applied to our lives. So that the people will not be destroyed by the plague. And so it is very important that you understand this. We all know that Jesus has died for you and for me. Jesus, the Lamb of God, has given up His life. But that death is useless. And the blood that was shed is useless for you. If you do not apply it to your life. In the case of the people of Israel, they were instructed, Exodus 12, 22, to take a bunch of His stuff. Hyssop is a herb, a plant that grows in the Middle East. Dip that bunch of hyssop into the blood in the basin and put some of the blood of the lamb on the top and on both sides of the frame. None of them shall go out of their houses until the morning. And then when the plague comes, the destroyer will not enter the houses of those who had the blood that was already shed on their behalf. You see, that plague was to affect everybody. But those who already had death happened on their behalf no longer had to experience death. They no longer had to die. No one had to die in their households because someone already died for them. That was the lamb in the case of the Israelites in the time of Moses. And it is the lamb of God, Jesus Christ, in our time and in our case. You know, Jesus already died for you. And He rose again for you. And the Bible says when you believe in Him, when you obey Him, and you continue to believe in Him, and continue to obey Him, the Bible says that His death becomes your death, and His resurrection becomes your resurrection, and His victory becomes your victory, and now you are victorious over all dangers, including the danger of the new coronavirus. And so today, the Lord is encouraging you today. The Lamb of God, Jesus, has given up His life. When you follow Him and believe in Him, you will be saved, not just from sin, although that is the greatest danger, but you will be saved practically today from the new coronavirus and other dangers. And so today, protection is available, but only those who continually say by words and actions that Jesus Christ is the owner and Savior of their lives, only them can enjoy it. Do you know that today there is a supernatural protection that's available for you and anyone. But those who reject it cannot. But those who receive it and declare by their words and actions that Jesus is now the Lord, the owner, and He is now the Savior of their lives, they can enjoy it. And the Bible says, Revelation 12, 11, And they have conquered Him, their enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The Lamb there is capital L, referring to Jesus Christ. They defeated, we defeat the enemy by the blood of Jesus that He shed on the cross. He already shed His blood. Now it's available. Now when we take that, and by the word of our testimony, by what we say through our mouths and by our actions, and we say actions speak louder than words, but anyway, what we say by words and actions, our testimony becomes our weapon to destroy the enemies that want us and attack us. Do you know that today there is salvation for you? The greatest danger is sin and the consequences of eternal separation from God. But the Bible also says that there is a danger, other dangers that we are also protected from. And the Bible says when you believe in Jesus, 
His blood, the blood of the Lamb. And your testimony will give you the victory over those threats. Are you afraid of the new coronavirus? Nahatlog pa kakaroon? Nastress out na baka kayo? Grabe na ang imong kahadlog ani. Dili na kayo kakatulog. It's spreading in the community. Many people are getting infected. Now we know people who already are affected and infected. And we are afraid that it may come to us. But the Bible says to you today that by the blood of the Lamb Jesus, and when you say and by your actions also say that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, the blood of the Lamb covers you and the resurrection of Jesus protects you. Thank you, Lord. Now Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord, the owner of the moth. And believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, the resurrection of Jesus, then we are saved when we do that. For with the heart, one is, believes and is justified, and with the mouth, one confesses and are saved. And so today I invite you to believe in Jesus Christ. Not just an intellectual belief, not just a religious belief, but a real life belief that Jesus is the Savior, not religion. Not good works. They can never save you. They can never protect you from judgment from sin. But Jesus, if you confess Him as your Lord and your Savior, the Bible says that you will be saved. And then First John five eighteen talks about people who claim to be born of God or children of God, not continuing in sin. And that's why we say, by our actions, we declare that Jesus is Lord. The blood of Jesus has cleansed us because we value it and we continue to follow God and stop doing sinful things. The one who is born of God, uh, First and 5, 5.18 says that Jesus keeps us safe and the evil one cannot harm us. And so the evil one cannot harm you and me because of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says that Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. And so he already died for you. And so now you and I should live for him. Do you know that Jesus died for you so that you will live for him? Don't be selfish about salvation. Don't be self-absorbed about life and things. Jesus died for you because he loves you. But if you receive that salvation, there is an expectation from God that you love Him back and you obey Him and you follow His will. With the protection of the Lord, the promise of God is that it is available for you. Someone asked a person, he said, can a man live on the moon? And a person not knowing what he meant and where he was going in the conversation uh, did not answer. And so this man told him the answer. He said, the answer is no and yes. A man cannot live on the moon if he goes as he is. Because his body cannot take all of the atmosphere, toxins, and so on in the moon. He will die. He will die quickly. And yet, if he goes to the moon wearing a space suit, a space suit like what the astronauts wear, he will be able to live on the moon. He can survive on the moon. And the lesson there is, because the spacesuit is like a replica of the atmosphere of the earth. Even though man who is of the earth is in the moon, he can, if, although he is surrounded by toxins and poisonous gases, he can survive because he is covered and protected. Do you know that the blood of Jesus, the anointing of the blood of Jesus covers you? And that there are dangers all around you. They say that, that uh, the virus can be transmitted airborne, in the aerosolized, especially in close uh, places. But today, even though there, there it is in the atmosphere, or you can touch it in surfaces, the Bible says that you are covered by the anointing of the blood of Jesus, and you are protected, and God keeps you safe. You can be safe. Even if you need to go to the grocery, you need to go and buy something at the pharmacy, the Lord protects you and His presence covers you. And so you can be saved from that. There is no need to fear. Thank you, Lord. And then the Lord protects His children from plagues and destruction. 
Do you know that the Lord protects you if you're His child from destruction? You see, the Lord protects His children. He is zealously working to protect His own. I have here with me a wristwatch. It's my watch. And I'll wear it almost every day. And you know, I protect it. I watch over it. I guard it. Because it's mine. It's my property. If you're a follower of Jesus, if you're a follower of Christ, you are the property of God. You now belong to Him. You have surrendered your life to Him. Now He's your Lord, your owner, and He's your Savior. Today, if you believe in Jesus and follow Him, be assured that you are protected. If you're following God, if you're declaring by your actions that He is your owner and Savior, then you are safe. God takes very good care of His own. I am a father, a biological father. I take care of my son. If you're a child of God by repentance and faith, God loves you so much and He protects you and He cares for you and He will keep you safe from the new coronavirus and other dangers. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews 1, 14 talks about angels of God who are sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Do you know that angels of God are watching over you and protecting you? They are God's angels and soldiers to guard you and protect you. And Isaiah 54, 14 to 17 talks about God's protection. It says, terror will be far removed. It will not come near you. 17, no weapon force against you will prevail. Do you know that the new coronavirus will not prevail over you? It cannot destroy you. You have to believe it. Ayaw pag pilosopo. Ayaw pag reasonal. Yes, on the natural, the new coronavirus is powerful. But we know from those scriptures, we know from truth and experience, that there is supernatural power that's available in God. And when you're a child of God, living in obedience to God, in faith in God, the Lord protects you and He keeps you safe. God protects His sons and daughters. If you're not saying by words and actions that Jesus Christ is the owner and Savior of your life, you do not have protection from God against physical or temporal and spiritual or eternal threats. If ang imong desisyon, dili ni mo kikinabuhi ang pagsunod sa ginoong Jesus. Dili si Jesus, ang Lord and Savior, owner and redeemer of your life, then there is no supernatural protection from God against eternal danger, separation from God, hell. There are, there are no protection uh, from those and other dangers. And so God today wants to remind you, if you want the protection of God, you should confess, you should say by words and actions that Jesus truly is the Lord and the Savior of your life. And you will live for Him, and you will love Him, and you will obey Him. And when you do that, there's protection for you. Exodus 35 talks about Pharaoh, the emperor of Egypt, stubbornly refusing to obey God's instructions. And the gods of Egypt and the people of Egypt were judged as well because of unbelief and disobedience. Hebrews 10, 26 to 27 talks about us deliberately keeping on sinning, continuing to sin. And when we do that, there is judgment and destruction that will follow. You see, today, God wants to protect everyone. God wants to save everyone. But today, if you're here and you are disobedient, you are rebellious, you are selfish, you are not trusting God, you're trusting in your good works, you're trusting in yourself, where the Bible says, if that is your choice, if that is your decision, that you cannot receive forgiveness from God. You cannot receive protection from God. There is no blessing from God for you if you decide to go that way. And today, as we're beginning to wrap up, I want to encourage you, apply the blood of Jesus to your life by a lifestyle of repentance and faith, and you will be safe from spiritual and eternal dangers, as well as from physical and temporal dangers. You know, the blood of Jesus has been shed 2,000 years ago. Jesus already died for you and for me. But if you don't apply that, if you don't reach out to Jesus and take that, then that is useless for you. 
It's absolutely no. And it has no benefit for you if you don't reach out and give your life to Jesus. Today, I want to remind you there is salvation that's available. There's protection that's available, but you have to apply it. In the case of the Israelites, in the story in Exodus 12, they have to slaughter an animal, a lamb, catch the blood in a basin, and they were to take a bunch of hyssop and dip the hyssop on the basin with the blood and strike the doorpost and the top, applying the blood. The blood on the basin is useless. Only the blood on the houses are helpful and beneficial. Today, the Lord is inviting you to give your life to Him. To apply the blood of Jesus to you. How? By believing in Him. By surrendering your life to Him. You and I need to repent of our sins. You and I need to surrender our lives to the Lord. You and I need to give our lives to Jesus. Follow Him. Biyan na ang sala. Haligtan na ang dautan. I forsake na ito selfishness. At the pride of the rebellion. And let's follow Jesus. Let's give our lives to Him. Applying what he did on the cross for us. Romans 5, 9 talks about us being forgiven or justified by the blood of Jesus. Version 4, 7 says we need to walk in the light. It's like a higher doing good and godly things. And when we do that, the blood of Jesus continues to cleanse us. And you Sally, that some time ago, you already gave your life to the Lord. Don't, you know, put confidence in the past experience. And now you're living disobediently. There's no protection for you. If you're not living in obedience right now, you cannot be protected right now. You have to believe in God right now. You have to follow God right now to be protected right now. By your words and actions, you declare who is the owner of your life and who is your Savior. Walk in God. Exodus 12 talks about that, that God is able to pass over those who have the blood and no plague will befall them to destroy them. That's verse 13. It's like the soap and the hand sanitizer. Today, you probably have soap, perhaps lots of soap in your home, in your boarding house. You carry alcohol over you wherever you go when you leave the house. Those things are very powerful and useful. They destroy the new coronavirus. But if you don't use them, if you don't apply them, they are useless. Today, the Lord wants to shield you from all of these dangers and threats. But you need to apply the blood of Jesus. You need to declare Him as the Lord of your life. The last point, and then we will pray. Every day, declare or speak God's promises and obey God's commands. So you will experience His protection. Matag-adlaw, isulti ni mo ang proteksyon ni Lord sa imo ang kinabuhi. Buhato ni mo ang kabubutan sa ginoo para magpadayon ang proteksyon ni Lord sa imo ang kinabuhi. Every day, declare or speak that God is your Savior. Jesus is the Lamb of God. And you have applied that blood by repentance and faith. And you continue to declare that over your life. And then you obey God. You do not live in compromise or sin or disobedience. Then God forgives you and God protects you. Again, Revelation 12, 11, They will have conquered the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Their words, their testimony, what they do, how they live out, expresses what they believe and therefore it becomes their declaration of faith and victory. Proverbs 18, 21 says, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. You see, by your words, you live, and by your words, you can die. By your words, you can be healed, and by your words, you can get sick. If you're a child of God, your words have special power, because you are a child of God, and the power of your words has greater effect on yourself and others. Today, I encourage you, Declare the blood of the Lamb over your life. Every morning when you pray, throughout each day when you pray, declare, I am saved because of the blood of Jesus. My family is protected because of the blood of Jesus. I am victorious because Jesus has died and rose again. And because of that, I am victorious and I am saved. Ayaw kakapoy, pag ana. Ayaw pag pinosopo na amuhi mo ng irisonal. The Word of God is powerful. It has creative power. 
It can produce something when you speak it out of faith, when it's the Word of God and it's true in your life. Today and these days as we go through this coronavirus pandemic, declare the Word of God, let out the Word of God. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. You are empowered by the resurrection of Jesus. And therefore, you are saved. And so right now, I want us to pray. Can you close your eyes? And right now, if it's appropriate, you're in a private place. It's appropriate. Raise your hand right now. And we will pray. And we will ask the Lord to bless us today. We will pray to the Lord. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that you do care for us. We thank you, Lord God, that your love covers us. Lord, you really care. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that forgives us and protects us. Thank you for the resurrection of Jesus that declares nothing is impossible and that we are victorious because of our faith in Jesus, our relationship with Jesus. So Lord, bless us today. Bless us today. Right now, wherever you are, kung wala pa ni mo, gitugyan ni mo kina buhay sa ginoong Jesus. Wala pa ka nagsalig ang Jesus. Today, if you have not yet surrendered your life to the Lord, you have not yet repented of your sins and are trusting in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Lord is calling you today. Jesus is inviting you today. Give your life to Him. Surrender your life to Him. Today, would you give your life to Jesus? Today, would you say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm a selfish person. I'm a rebel. I need you, Lord. Jesus, would you forgive me? And Lord, I no longer trust in religion. I no longer trust in my good works. I no longer trust in prayers or masses or giving to the poor and needy. I trust not in my works, but in the death of Jesus on the cross. Jesus, you died for me. I trust in you. I trust in you today. If in your heart you believe in Jesus, tell him today, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I trust you. Come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Jesus, forgive me, cleanse me, protect me, heal me. Right now where you are, give your life to the Lord. Tell Him today, Jesus, the Lamb of God, you shed your blood, you died for me. Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, I trust you. Ginoo ni Sus, kanero sa Diyos, akong ihatag akong kinabuhi sa inyo, nagsalig ko sa inyo, ikaw na akong manluluwas, ang takian ako, ikaw na akong You know, Jesus, I trust you. Come on, pray that prayer right now. Surrender your life to the Lord. Do not waste this chance. Jesus is able to give you protection. But first, you need to apply the blood of Jesus over your life. You need to confess His death and resurrection, and then you will be saved. Tell Him, Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Come on, pray the prayer right now. Pray that prayer right now. The Lord is beside you through the Holy Spirit. is listening to you right now. It's not an accident that you're watching or listening. Tell Him, Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, come into my life. Surrender your life to Him. And He will forgive you. Lord God, we thank you that you care. And thank you, Lord God, that you forgive those who turn to you. And right now, I want us to pray. I want to release over you the protection of God. I want to declare over you the blood of Jesus. And the resurrection of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, I declare your words. They are powerful. I declare that your sons and daughters are protected. Your sons and daughters are covered by the blood of Jesus. And they are, they are empowered by the resurrection of Jesus. I declare over you that you are safe. That you are protected. That you are covered by the blood of Jesus. I declare over you that you are strong and empowered by the resurrection of Jesus. Maybe karon di kapuy naka. Maybe karon gagluya naka. Maybe karon your faith level is low and down. But the Lord gives you strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And the power of the Holy Spirit and the resurrection of Jesus gives you the strength to move on. Be strong. Be strong. Receive the power of Jesus. And today I declare over your protection. I declare over your family. A protection sa gino na sa imong panimalay, sa imuha, sa imong mga pamilya. Your family, whether living here or elsewhere, abroad maybe, God protects them. 
and God takes care of them. I declare over you the protection of God. The blood of Jesus covers you. The blood of Jesus protects you. The blood of Jesus gives you the victory. And the resurrection of Christ gives you the power to overcome whatever may happen in the future. So God bless your people, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. And right now, I want to pray a blessing over you. Receive the blessing of God. If you're in a private place, raise your hand and receive the blessing of the Lord before we close. And now the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly. And the Lord bless you with His peace. In the name of Jesus we pray, and everyone would say, Amen and Amen. Thank you for watching today, and again, I want to congratulate you. If you're a follower of Jesus, if you have just given your life to the Lord, then congratulations, and I declare over you the peace of God, the joy of God, the victory of God. Keep posted. We will continue to come up with words of services like this for your encouragement. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Though we are not able to gather physically during this time, we encourage the faithful giving of tithes and offerings. Understand that your giving matters. Here are some channels where you can give your tithes and offerings. You may do a bank deposit in the following branches that bears the account name, The Lighthouse Christian Fellowship, Union Bank, Rizal Branch, Account number 1001-7003-9801 China Bank, Recto Branch Account number 1722528018 Metro Bank, Rizal Branch Account number 0583058628159 PNB, Victoria Plaza Branch Account number 401710001879 Kindly provide a copy of a screenshot of your deposit slip to the Lighthouse Facebook page for verification. Another channel of giving is through GCash. Please use these numbers 0998158 0918 May God bless you as you faithfully give your tithes and offerings.